there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. Uh, today, we're going to talk about our copper conductive fabric strips. And these strips are useful for bonding your cable shield to your termination hardware, whether that be a patch panel or a plug or uh, a um, keystone jack. Now, what separates um, our copper fabric strips, which come in packs of hundreds, 10 per sheet, from the traditional uh, copper uh, tape, if you've been using it uh, in the past, uh, is you would normally remove the copper tape and it has a conductive adhesive, and then you wrap it around. But one of the problems with copper is it's easily ripped. And that's one of the, you know, and not to mention it also adds thickness to your cable because no matter how well you try to wrap it around, it just sort of crunches up on you and uh, you end up with a, a, a thick cable that's, I mean, it's almost like you, uh, had uh, folded back the cable shield anyway. And uh, so copper fabric strips, on the other hand, they're thin and they have the same conductive adhesive and a copper infused fabric. So they're quite a bit tougher to rip apart. In fact, they're pretty sturdy. And when they wrap around that cable, they don't add anything to, your, to the thickness of it. So where would you want to use a copper fabric strip? And you know, why? Uh, I mean, isn't the old method of folding the cable shield back good enough? Well, yeah, but, you know, things improve. And so this is uh, one of the newest things when it comes to bonding your cable shield. Okay, so if you've been working with uh, shielded Ethernet cable in the past, uh, you know, or you're new to it, if you strip off the cable jacket, you're going to be presented with this nice blue uh, foil mylar backed cable shield. And inside there are all your conductor wires. Well, the traditional way of dealing with that has been to fold the cable shield backwards like so, right along the cable jacket, take the drain wire that's in here and then fold it and then wrap it around. Um, that's been the traditional way of dealing with it, and it works. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. But what it can do, though, is add a lot of thickness to an already very thick cable to begin with. And uh, also, there are situations where the cable shield is accidentally removed. So why not eliminate the problem altogether and switch over to a system that doesn't rely on having this cable shield attached or folded backwards? Instead, why not rely on something that you can come back here after you've got your cable stripped. You can then make a small nip here in your cable shield, peel it right on off intentionally. You got this drain wire. And then you can take your drain wire and then fold it backwards and wrap it around your cable jacket. And then take your copper fabric strip here and depending on whether you're terminating a Keystone Jack or an RJ45 plug, the position of this copper fabric strip is going to change. We'll just assume that we're going to do a Keystone Jack, for example. So you're going to put it right at the edge. And voila. The drain wire has now been tacked down. The conductive adhesive is making contact with the drain wire. And that's going to transfer electromagnetic energy through this copper fabric and into your termination hardware. And you don't have to deal with this annoying cable shield uh, getting in your way. You don't have to worry about trimming it off. It's ready to go. Uh, the, you don't have to, it's a misnomer that you have to have this cable shield folded backwards and you have to have the drain wire wrapped around it. It's actually not required to do all that. Um, as long as you can bond your drain wire to the hardware, it's going to bond the cable shield as well because it's making contact uh, with the shield uh, as it's running through the cable. So how does that look uh, when it comes to some terminations? Okay, so here we have a shielded toolless keystone jack and this jack is composed of a uh, nickel, uh, basically a nickel plated zinc alloy, and it's got a grounding spring that's found right here. 
and that grounding spring needs to make contact with that copper fabric. So we take the copper fabric and we put it all the way to the edge of the cable jacket, like so. And then you've got your conductor holder cap on here. It's already wired up. And you put it into your jack, close it. Use parallel pliers to close this guy. There we go. And now that leaf spring in there is making excellent electrical contact. It's bonding. It's called the process of making a low resistance electrical contact is called bonding. So this particular strip is now nicely bonded to this keystone jack, which is exactly what you want. And because the strip is bonded nicely with the keystone, the strip is also making electrical contact with that drain wire, which is making contact with the cable shield. So therefore, this is a valid termination and the cable shield is now terminated to your hardware. That's exactly how that should look. But what about RJ45 plugs? Well, in this case, we've got an external ground shielded CAT6 slash 6A shielded plug. And we've got a really thick cable here. And um, what I did here is I folded, the, I, I folded the drain wire back. Of course, the cable shield is gone. I folded the drain wire back. I wrapped it around, but I skipped a little more than a half an inch uh, past the end of the cable jacket. The reason why, and I'm a, you'll see why in a second here, why that's important. So you put this guy in there, you see, see the cable as far forward as it'll go, and that's as far as it's going to go. And then when you put these external ground tabs down and crimp it, you can see where they're going to end up crimping onto. It's going to end up crimping over that copper fabric conductive strip. So if you had put that fabric strip at the very end of the cable jacket up here, it would be too far forward and these fingers would, would make poor contact or even no contact with the fabric strip. So the general rule is when dealing with keystones and field termination plugs, uh, put the strip all the way at the edge of the jacket. And if it's an RJ45 plug, skip about a little more than quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch uh, backwards. And that's how that would look. And no fuss, no muss, and no, and no annoying cable shield to deal with. But arguably the most useful uh, Thing for copper fabric strips. Most useful uh, application example is our Category 5V shielded cable. In this case, it's the Category 5V direct burial. Um, this is a shielded RJ45 plug, and it is not making use of an external ground. It's making use of an internal ground. And so when you are folding back a cable shield on a shielded cable, and you're pushing it into a, into a plug that's got an internal ground, uh, sometimes that cable shield can uh, rip on you, or sometimes it makes it a little bit too thick to jam in there. So what you do is you skip about three eighths of an inch back, wrap your drain wire around, put this fabric strip on there, which didn't add any thickness to that cable jacket. And then you can push it right in. And it made excellent bonding contact with the, uh, with the springs here inside this plug. So that's a great example of where copper fabric strips are not just a, um, a luxury, but nearly a necessity. Uh, so that's, I mean, I, when I go terminating this type of cable, the Cat 5E outdoor shielded stuff, when I use it, uh, I'll always switch over and start using these fabric strips. Uh, in other situations, I, I'll use the fabric strip sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes, no, it depends on whether I have them easily at hand or not. But it is another, another alternative for you, and it does have some very valid applications, and it makes things a lot simpler. So if uh, you enjoyed our video, leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you see fit. Subscribe to our channel and you have a great day and happy networking. Thank you.